This is actually the first time I've ever done a podcast with an entire analytics and data science team. So I suspect we'll be covering a lot of ground here. But uh, for context, you're all data scientists on the analytics team at Medium, which means your focus is not on recommender systems or other directly user-facing software, but rather on understanding the business from the inside, figuring out ways to optimize business strategy, business processes, growth, and so on. Maybe to start things off, Raquel, could you walk us through the way the team is organized? Like, what are the, the team's priorities and how are you organized to execute on them? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh... So our team, we're like four, four data scientists. Uh, I'm like kind of the de facto team leader just because we're like actually hiring for a head of data science right now. Uh, and we do need someone to organize uh, the team. Uh, generally the company is organized in kind of four pillars. Uh, two of them are supply side. So premium content, um, like that's more editorial side. And then there's the like uh, demand side. That's the reader side. And it's organized in two groups, like reader experience and then life cycle growth. Um, growth related like analysis and analytics um, and product. And then uh, we have Rajan who's assigned to this like uh, life cycle group, focus on growth. Then we have Christine assigned to the pop platform world. Uh, and then Asher and myself are kind of like across different groups and also work in something called horizontal that are more like company-wide analysis, things that the like executive team would uh, want to ask about or like dig a little bit deeper on and also kind of keeping up with our infrastructure. Everyone does a little of infra work and ETL work because we do something. We don't have like a data platform team dedicated to data, data science. Uh, so within this like horizontal group, we also uh, we also do some like that doesn't doesn't really see like uh, it's not really for a different stakeholder like product or engineering. It's more, mostly for us. Uh, and Asher and I would probably do more, most of the work there. Uh, also, Asher helps out with the reader experience team. But because within that team, they have like uh, ML engineers and recommendations engineers, they kind of are a little bit more self-serve in terms of analytics, uh, just because of the nature of. Yeah. I mean, I think generally speaking, there's sort of like two different modes of organization that teams like ours have. Like one mode is fully distributed, wherein you know each individual data scientist mostly lives with a product team. Um, and has sort of limited interaction with the other data scientists. And then there's a sort of fully centralized model where we're, you know, a team that all sits together and take take requests inbound from all the other teams and delegate them out among ourselves. And I think we're kind of a hybrid between those two um, because we're a relatively small team um, relative to the size of the company uh, generally. Um, you know, it's it's the case that we each have areas that are sort of our our focus, but we all kind of flexible across the pillars. So like if need be, we have the context to work, you know, in any part of the company. And this is a little bit different than like it would be the case in a company where you sort of more mm -hmm. specialized in a product area. Right. And actually one thing that came up in both your answers was immediately you went to this idea of medium as a marketplace. And I think this is something where, you know, listeners who are used to thinking of traditional SaaS companies or companies where, you know, the company makes a product and then they ship that product to people and they charge money for that product. And it's pretty straightforward. The dynamics of a marketplace are a little bit different. There's, as you mentioned, you know, Raquel alluded to supply and demand and you have people specializing on each side. Can you maybe can someone give a quick overview of what a what a marketplace model looks like and then why it's necessary to split up the supply and the demand analysis? Yeah, I can I can take a stab uh, at it first. Uh, but at its at its most basic form, medium is uh, medium business is like an exchange of five dollars or fifty dollars, depending on where you have an annual of or monthly membership for a set of content. Uh, right, and then we we need to like make sure that those like five or fifty dollars per per user actually like go through a different set of users. That's like our our supply side, our, our writers, uh, and we just take a cut in between. Like a medium medium's business model is just like taking this cut. So on the demand side, when we talk about demand side, is this like uh, is this like a bunch of people that want to read things, and then on the supply side, we have all of these like writers that just want to produce content and get like money off of it, and we're just kind of the middleman, and that's how. That's like generally how, how why, why we talk about it in the marketplace. And th there are two parts on the supply side that I think are uh, kind of split it out. One is the partner program, uh, which is like our program for any that anyone can sign up to and you can just write and then take all of the reading or the paid reading that happens on Medium and kind of assign a value to that. And then we also have this like commission content that is like more content that we like produce ourselves and pay a specific fee for it to be created and, ex and exist in the world, which are like and two different, two different like areas of on the supply. 
Um, and then on the reader side, we do have a uh, funnel of demand, which is from like a logged out traffic and then converts to like a logged in traffic to then converts to like a paid membership account. And because we have all of these different steps, uh, you kind of can like break it down into like an actual funnel of, of demand that translates into revenue. And then this revenue gets allotted out to the supply set, the, the use the, the writers. Well, maybe this is a great segue into uh, Rajan's area of specialization here. Because so Rajan, you're focused on the, the growth side of things for readers, so for readership. So in other words, yeah. what uh, Ra- Raquel has been referring to as demand here. Um, I think growth is a tricky word for a lot of people to wrap their mind around because it seems so open-ended. Um, what does growth analytics mean at Medium? And then what are some of the key numbers that you're using to track that growth? Yeah, totally. Uh, I guess to what Raquel alluded to, the growth team or the lifecycle team at Medium more focuses on our funnel more holistically. And so, uh, again, this is uh, considering at the top of the funnel of our logged out traffic, uh, getting these users to either sign in and sign up, uh, creating uh, uh engagement and promoting their engagement buckets so that they're more indicative of retention and eventual member conversion. And yeah, so that like brings us to like a bottom line of the funnel, which is actually converting to members. Um, as far as a lot of our growth initiatives, it's, it's, I think when many people think of growth, they think of, uh, things like growth marketing that are very externally facing, uh, at medium, we're definitely internally facing. So this is sort of promoting these users to these different pieces of our funnel itself. And so some of our core metrics that we will track is like, you know, logins, sign-ins and sign-ups amongst, uh, towards the top of the funnel, uh, conversions, as I mentioned before, towards the bottom of the funnel, but there's some intermediate steps as well. So for example, we'll uh, track something called activation, which is understanding, you know, what proportion of our signups are exhibiting engagement behavior that we think is predictive of retained engagement and eventual conversion. Mm. Um, and then even further down is like, you know, what proportion of these users are actually reading our premium content, uh, you know, which is leading them to have exhibit a, a read share that would be more indicative of eventual conversion as well. So that's kind of like uh, what we look at and what we think of when we say growth um, at Medium. 